Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbox here. Welcome to Manchester United episode 25 in the second season. We are getting very, very close to the January transfer window, of course, which means the return of the green screen. But for now, we are going to be doing some more games, uh, just normal pre or post comps. And this is going to be a big one. We have got the first Manchester derby of the season, and it's going to be played at home, which of course is parallel to the previous season where we played the away game first and then played the second game at home, which unfortunately ended in a draw. The last time we played them at Old Trafford, when we played them in uh, at, when we played them at the Etihad, we actually were able to beat we were able to beat them. But hopefully, we can get a better result at home this time around. As we see the team that they're lining up with, it's a little bit of a different team. They're playing some of the younger kids. Rekic, Zuccolini is a really good player. Even Marco Lopez, who was one of those like low 60, mid 60 rated players that's meant to explode into the 80s, and it's crazy. And they've made some really good signings as well. They've got guys like Ben Zemmer in the team too. So really, a couple of players that you have to look for. But anyway, uh, you got Pogba, who's just charging through. I mean, Moon is doing everything he can trying to tackle him, but it's just too long. He's too long legs. He can't be tackled, and he just goes on through. He had a shot, and unfortunately, he put it right to the goalkeeper, but that was a hell of a through ball from, I think it was Rodriguez in a Di Maria. Unfortunately, couldn't work anything in. He tried to cross into Rooney. It wasn't happening, but still. Uh, so, pretty much early on in the first half, in the first like 30 minutes or so. We were really dominating until Marco Lopez went in for a shot. I went in for a sliding tackle. Referees pointed at a penalty. You're not going to get an argument from me. It was a very final... Okay, maybe a little bit annoyed now that you're giving me a red. I mean, don't fucking push me. I didn't piss you off. I didn't slag you off and you go and give me a red. That's so disrespectful. But Torre hits the crossbar. Oh, wait, it doesn't matter. Because the bar, it hits the bar, bounces out, and then falls perfectly to Milner. And look at him follow in here. We've got Rodriguez and Pogba all trying to get in front of him. Not None of them can. I mean, the least Pogba could have done is just hold him. Just hold him. I know that's probably another penalty, but fuck it. I mean, we conceded the goal anyway. But anyway, straight from kickoff. Ronaldo's gone way past the centre-back red kick, way too easily, and he's just going to finesse it near post. I mean, that was way too easy. I mean, poor defending from the young centre-back there. And really, if that was, say, I don't know, Mangala or Vinton Company, I don't think that would have happened, but still, it happened. And anyway, Lopez, Milner, still working. Jovetic, that's bullshit passing. That's some really, really good passing. And unfortunately, wasn't able to make the tackle. I think that's just one touch passing on Legendary. Some teams just do it so well. You just have to wait until they eventually shoot or you can get lucky and cut it off. But Ronaldo just going through and just quietly trying to get a goal for himself. And maybe that's the way we're going to have to do it. But anyway... He's the only goal scorer so far, but Pogba has been insane in this game. Really good. Rooney's in a good spot. We've got a man in the middle. Is he going to play him in? Yes, he will. It's a turbo. One man, Willie Turbo. Comes up with another goal. This kid from Argentina has been everywhere. He has had such a good start to his life at Manchester United. He scored goal after goal after goal, but sadly, we couldn't get another one out of him or of anyone else in the team. It finished 2-2. So, two games, two Games against Man City played at Old Trafford have both resulted in draws, sadly, at least in the Premier League. Uh, not exactly regarding cup competition, but still. That still means that uh, we're yet to lose to Man City, which is a good thing, and we've beaten them once out of three occasions. We'll try to up that number a little bit later. But from the Premier League, now going into the uh, in the capital... Not the capital, bloody hell. It's way bigger than the capital one. The bloody Champions League place. We're playing a away game at the Zenit fixture, or playing the Zenit fixture, and uh, the... The stadium that EA have given Zenit, is that really what they look I would have expected their stadium to have been a bit bigger. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're playing them. And they're struggling at the moment. You would have thought Zenit and Manchester United of all those four teams would probably be the two, two, like the outstanding teams in this in this group. And they're the ones that would have gone through. But Zenit behind, Vince, uh, Zenit behind Copenhagen at the moment, only by a point. But we've just been dominating this league. Braga have only been able to get one point in four games. So they're pretty much done. Well, they're not. But we're expecting them not to get through. We're expecting Zenit... The team that actually has some decent players on their roster to really put up a fight to Copenhagen and Braga. But really, if we win this game here, or even if we draw it, I reckon, that's pretty much it. We're good. We are absolutely solid. We might even be, we might even pretty much be 100% mathematically. Oh my God. Look at that flip. You see that shit? I need to get a replay. Look at this. RKO out of nowhere. I know that's slowly dying, but that was a... Full-on backflip. Like an unbelievable, ridiculous athleticism. I don't know if he got pulled back or whatever. I don't know how that happens. But seriously, players are just flopping and flailing all over the place nowadays. It's ridiculous. But we give away a free kick for... I don't even think it was a tackle. I think it was a minor bump or something like that. Right in the uh, right on the edge of the box. And Hulk just really... like Keeper doesn't even move for it. Just puts it in a perfect little free kick. But we still continue on. Rooney's just going past defenders with ease and toe pokes it underneath the goalkeeper. And that's 1-1. So, as soon as we concede, we get one back straight away. I mean, that's been the case. We've, 
really, in so far this episode, we've been down and we've con- we've been we've conceded and then come back and scored an equaliser. We're yet to go ahead yet in any of these games. As you saw the as you saw the one before, we actually nearly conceded there. But look at this, Rooney going through another finesse shot. It's, I think that might have even hit the post, but he shattered. Look at him collapse to the ground. I can't believe he didn't score that, and I don't think he can either. But no, it ended in a 1-1 draw. It's another draw. Two games in this episode, two draws, unfortunately. But really, in the end, if you saw the um, the ball that somehow got over the back to um, one of the Zenit players at the far post, how he missed that header. We with no one around him was astonishing, but we got super lucky. Anyway, we got a 1-1 draw, which I think pretty much, even if we'd lost that game, there's really almost no point. We are through. We are 100%. We're on 12 points after four games. That was the fifth game. We are done. We are through. Absolutely. There's no way. But now, we come back to England, back to the Premier League, and we play an away game against Norwich City. Obviously, recently promoted back into the Premier League in the previous season. And they are going stupidly well. That, like, that's ridiculous. Norwich, fourth in the BPL. And some of the teams that are below them, like teams like Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City are so far behind as well. It's insane. And yeah, no, it's, it's crazy that this team was in the championship last season it's like that's like j bucks road to glory career mode numbers right there that's unbelievable stuff but jerome jerome the leading goal scorer for uh, norwich jerome and you know of course like he's just an absolute goal machine but anyway they're still going anyway we've got guys like gary hooper and nathan redmond at the helm in this team that's the team that's going to be playing champions league next season if the season ended today but anyway we're still going. I guess in uh, in the end, I had to give him a little bit of props because it had been 40 minutes and I'd struggled to score. Schneiderlin, who we all know is a great center defensive midfielder, but not a very good goal scorer. He um, scored a few pretty early in the season, but he couldn't make anything happen that time. The punch away. Forza Rodriguez, who's got some very good volleying. Uh, he's got a very good volley. He's good shooting, really. But unfortunately, just a little bit over the crossbar. Nothing happening still with 15 minutes left to go. Rooney's being caught. He has to shoot it. And oh my God, right off the bottom of the crossbar. That's a stunning strike. So powerful. He's got 95 shot power, this guy. Wayne Rooney with one of the most stunning goals, I think, of this career mode season so far. We've had a few good ones, but that's challenging. It's seriously right in the top right-hand corner. Coming off the bottom of the crossbar, it's such a good hit. I mean, Ruddy is not going to do anything about that. That's a brilliant little strike. Fantastic stuff. And just on the ball as well, I know that it's yellow. I don't know why. Look at Ander Herrera. He is unbelievably stoked with that. He can't believe what he's seen. He's showing no emotion whatsoever. I don't know if he's just that, if he's just like that or not. But anyway, funny story. You see him now getting substituted immediately after scoring that goal. I brought on two players, Hernandez, Ferruni, and someone else. I don't know, I don't know who he took off. But I literally made that substitution. He goes and does that. And then he's already... And he's coming off straight away. I wish... It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. But anyway, Hernandez, who was a player that's coming on for Rooney, works with one man, Wally Turbo. Turbe. Turbo having a shot nearly on target. I think maybe the keeper would have had it covered. But from an awkward height and an awkward position, still managed to get it done. And uh, De Gea, the lob through ball. Norwich pushing all their numbers forward. They had it right... We throw it right down the middle. And they've got numbers. It's three on two. The shot. And the last ditch save from David De Gea. Keeps us in the game and probably wins it for us. We've conceded the corner, but it not we would have been 1-1 right now if it was not for that man, David De Gea. Technically, he did throw it right down the middle and turn it over, but thankfully, he was the one that saved it after the poor throw. And in the end, it was that man. He made the difference, despite the fact that he could have very easily just kicked it and it wouldn't have even happened, but he made the last second save, which won us the game. And it was a Wayne Rooney belter that won it for us as well with that 1-0 uh, win. He ended up getting a 7.5 Wayne Rooney, but the man of the match was David De Gea, and that last save would surely have a bit to say with that. Anyway, back to cup competitions now. We're not the Capital One and not the Champions League. Why do I keep calling the Champions League the Capital One? I don't know. But anyway, we've got a game now, Everton, in the Capital One Cup final, and I'm not too sure if this, where we are exactly at the moment in the Capital One Cup. I guess we're about to find out. It is a home game anyway. No, it's not in the quarterfinals. I was about to say. No, wait, it is in the quarterfinals. What am I saying? It is in the quarterfinals. You all know I've got a little thing going on. In the Capital One Cup and the FA Cup last season, I was knocked out in the quarterfinals. Both cup competitions in the quarterfinals. It's the curse of the quarterfinals. And I go and concede in the quarterfinals to Everton. Lukaku scoring very early as well. Something's going on with me in quarterfinals. I don't know. But Di Maria, he's just... Duck, ducking and weaving past players, eventually gets fouled. It's Chris Smalling, by the way, a former Manchester United player who we eventually sold off. There's a five-man wall for Wayne Rooney. They will need the. Oh, they needed the extra man, but in the end, it worked. There's something going on with my free kicks. I remember first season free kicks with Wayne Rooney. I was four and five. I only missed one 
free kick and made four with five attempted. And now, I mean, I'm, my numbers are below 50%. It's ridiculous. I mean, free kicks are a lot easier this year, but I just haven't been able to work it. But the crosses in Iyanazai, they've been working out pretty well. He, get, he gets ahead in the 33rd minute, and we're back on level pegging once again. We've just been going... I mean, there's only one time in this game we've actually... In this entire episode, we've been leading. And that's against Norwich with 15 minutes to go. I really am struggling in this episode in recent games, which is uh, pretty disappointing, which is not good to move. But it's a really good run from Shakiri, And he finishes it, places it in the top left hand... In the bottom left-hand corner. Just a super very nice pass, really, into the middle. It was a great work there. And again, the same thing that Dav uh, David De Gea did before. Just throwing it right down the middle and missing one of my plays, turning it over, and that's an almost instantaneous goal. He couldn't stop. He could not stop at that time, unfortunately. And now we're right back to two-two. Thankfully, though, we're on the attack, and I'm starting to get some goals together, which is good. Two goals pretty early on. Now in the 70th, Schneiderlin, Klein, more passing. Under Herrera still going with a through ball, not a good ball. But what Smalling done? He's turned it over. Oh, he's given it right to Wayne Rooney, and he's struck it in the top left-hand corner. Smalling's just. He's mistouched it. No, it isn't even uh, it isn't even Wayne Rooney. I'm apologising, but please, it's it's uh, Shakiri. But look at that. Smalling's just on the ball. He goes behind him. He doesn't know where it is. He's completely lost his bearings. And he and he's I don't know if he's given that to us just as a bit of a thank you or something like that for past services rendered. But unbelievable scenes. And Wayne Rooney now running away from Smalling and sticks in the fourth goal. We go four two up against Everton. Curse of the quarterfinals. So long as we can hold out for the next 15 minutes, maybe get another one. You never know. Now it's three minutes. They're not coming back from this. We're finally about to break the curse of the quarterfinals. Thank God. And really, I needed it too. And it looked like we're getting a lot of help from this man, Smalling. Still chasing Wayne Rooney. Forever chasing Wayne Rooney. The finesse shot in the bottom right-hand corner, near post, finishes it. 5-2. That's how it's going to end. We beat Everton. We have gone through and progressed out of the Capital One Cup quarterfinals. We have finally made it past the quarterfinals of the cup competition. I can't believe it. We've finally done it. And now we go through to the semis. It's either going to be against Newcastle or more than likely Man City and Spurs. Unlikely that Derby or Stoke, or Stoke City are going to be able to beat those two teams. But either way, finally, a semi-final of the cup competition. We are just one or two, technically, games away from getting to Wembley for real and playing in a final. That'd be great. But for the next episode, we'll be against Arsenal. Don't forget to watch that one, guys. I'm Eros Game of the Masterbox. Peace out and have a good one. Bye-bye.